You know, if you, if, you, if you stay on the main highways of life, you will see two gray strips and a white line. But the minute you take a, a turn off or you deviate from where everyone else is going, that's when the adventure starts. So don't stick on the main highways. Always take the dirt roads. Always take the small roads. And always go around that other corner that you can't see. That's when you start discovering that there's more to this planet than just that big highway that you're stuck on. Elgin is a small little town. Um, it's got a valley which used to be run, uh, had lots of forestry and it's surrounded by mountains and it's surrounded on three sides by uh, biosphere which is some of the most biggest variety of plants in the world. Um, it's mainly a apple growing region um, although there are a lot of wine farms and we clearly support lots of their wine. Um, it's, uh, it's English and Afrikaans speaking. There's some very interesting characters here. It's got a long history. Uh, the, the first railway line outside here uh, was opened in 1902. And we're actually in the shed, which was built by Italian prisoners of war in the 1940s. My name's Roger Orpen. We're in the Elgin Railway Market, right at the center of the Elgin Valley, next to Chabot, Western Cape. I think Elgin, I moved here 20 years ago, so by Elgin standards, I think still very much a beginner and a newcomer. I think that's the way it is with farming districts. I gathered before I arrived here in 2001 that it was quite a closed district. You know, it was essentially apples and pears, which made them commodity farmers. And commodity farmers don't have to get out there and do a whole lot of marketing. So they are not very public people. And Elgin, I think, was always a very closed, quite secretive community and they had this Elgin flower show once a year or Elgin garden festival and that's really where people got to know Elgin but other than that I think it remained quite private and quite hidden which is what I quite like about it I think that um, it will never be gentrified in the sense that perhaps a village like Franz Hook has become but I think it's also part of the appeal um, but as a valley it's the natural beauty here is unbelievable and I think it's uncultivated um, in many ways. It's not as um, industrialized as some farming regions, which I think is really its main attraction. I'm Rosie Gunn, and I'm up here at Iona, which is part of the Elgin Valley. Well, the thing is, I think, you know, the, the most important thing if you're making great wine is climate. Um, and in fact, you need a cool to intermediate climate. And Elgin is, is particularly well known for being cool, because that's where apples thrive. But more specifically, a vineyard um, needs cooler conditions than one, uh, you know, often people think about vineyards needing the right soils. But cool conditions is what you need, because the grapes can ripen over a very long period, and you get lovely flavor development. I often liken it to making a stew. You know, do you cook a stew for, for half an hour at 200 degrees or do you cook it for, for a couple of hours at 150? You now the same thing with a vineyard. The longer the ripening period, the more the flavour development. My name's Andrew Gunn. Um, you're on my farm, which is a farm called Iona, and on, right on the southerly boundary of the Elgin Valley. Yeah, well, being, being, a, being, a, the, being a particularly cold area, it's, it's good for growing quality sparkling wine. Because um, Champagne's grown in the coolest area in France, and um, we, we grow in uh, very much a Champagne-style wine in the coolest growing region in South Africa. Right, yeah, I'm Charles Fox. Um, this is the Charles Fox Cup Classic Winery in Algon. The reason that Elgin is so popular as, as a destination for outdoor activities is the mountains. Um, yeah, we, we are surrounded by mountains. We're in a, a, a valley with mountains all the way around and for hiking, for mountain biking, for, for any outdoor activity. Uh, and then the beauty, we, we're in the middle of the Kuchelberg uh, Biosphere Reserve and there are over 1,800 different uh, plant species in this valley, which is the biggest by far in the world. My name is Peter Silberbauer, and uh, this is our hotel, Trails End, in the Elgin-Krubo Valley. 
My name is Chantal and you are currently at Peregrine Farm Store. Our most famous thing, of course, is our pies, especially the venison pies, um, handmade originally by Mr. Bill Senior himself. It's, it's really one of those places that you typically just drive through, but trust me, you need to stop. Heroism and Elgin. I think there are a lot of unsung heroes here, and amongst them I include apple farmers. I think, you know, we often joke among ourselves that um, we're not in a very impressive bunch in the sense that um, we're not hot, hip and happening. Um, yet I think a lot of the people that farm here and work here do things so incredibly well. Um, but they're quite um, self-effacing and but they're pretty damn good at what they do. So whilst um, I think that we don't attract huge media attention. I think the product that comes out here um, is very fine indeed and of a very high quality. And I think the people that, that produce them, and I can think of many of my fellow wine producers in here, they do pretty special things and they do it really, really well. I'd say Elgin's a, is, is a very quirky valley full of very, very interesting, odd, different people. It's only once you go off the beaten track and you start digging around that you find that there is, this is, this is not the normal suburbia. This is not the normal countryside. There's, there's people here who are quite extraordinary, quite extraordinary.